This is how you replicate objects in Adobe Animate. All right, so obviously the first thing you're gonna need is something to replicate. So in this case, I've made a flower and you can see that I just have a yellow layer, which is the middle, orange and green for the stem and bottom. So once you have the thing that you're going to replicate and animate drawn, then just select all of your layers, right click, copy those frames, go up to insert new symbol, call it flower or whatever you're gonna call it, make sure it's a graphic, click okay. And then when this thing comes up, click on the one frame that you have, right click and paste those frames. Now you're gonna see over in your library, you're gonna see a new symbol called flower or whatever you named yours. Okay, so now that I have the symbol made, I have to start bringing that symbol into an animation. So in this case, I have this scene that I made called park with flowers. All that's on it right now is one layer with a park image in the background. So I'm gonna add a new layer right here and call this one flowers. And then while I'm selected on that flowers layer, I'm gonna start bringing multiple flowers into this scene instead of drawing them individually, which would be much more time consuming and difficult. But because symbols are stored in our library, we can drag as many of them onto the stage as we want, which means we don't have to draw a whole bunch of different flowers or copy layers and keyframes to make more of them. Symbols allow us to create an asset once and then reuse it as many times as we need. And since all of them are the same symbol, when we double click to enter the container, whatever we do to any one of them, so if I alter this, you can see that by manipulating one, the other ones will automatically be updated as well. So that would include things like, you know, changing its shape. Maybe it's, if I click on this, it could be changing the color of something. So if I change this to a different color, you can see all of them change as well. If you add anything, so let me just click away here. If I click on here and change my color to something, maybe increase the brush size and plunk something in the middle there, you can see that it adds it to all of them. Plus if we animate something, so you can see this main one here is animated, the other ones won't show up right away. But when we go back to the main timeline, just like we learned before, all of them will actually have all those characteristics. So they'll animate and they'll have the little thing that we added. We changed the color here and manipulated this. All of them will be the same. But if we go to our free transform tool, we can still manipulate each one individually in terms of its scale, position, rotation, and kind of somewhat for its color. So if I click on this and then go down to color effects, we can, you know, because this is a multi-colored object, if I go to tint and try and change the color, it'll change the whole thing together. So if you have a single color one, that will work. But if you don't, then, you know, get rid of the tint and you could probably just try advanced here. So if I go to advanced, now I can kind of manipulate, you know, the reds there. I can make it see through or not. You can mess around with it a little bit to adjust the colors if you want. But just be aware that if you want to animate these separately, so have this one sway kind of different than this one, then you can't put them all in the same layer here. So if you need to animate your flowers uniquely, then make sure you put them each on their own layer. So this one, I'm gonna go back to my library, bring in a new flower, adjust that one down, kind of scale it in so it fits kind of in right here. And then now I can go in and put a classic tween on this one put a keyframe here at the end. And this one I can, you know, sway and do whatever I want to. So you can see that it sways back and forth different from the other ones, which means that anything we do to the container of a symbol that is on its own layer will be unique to that asset, the flower in this case, and anything we do with in the container, so if I double click, will affect all of the flowers the same. So I move that over and then go back, you'll see that that impacts all of the other ones as well as the one that I manipulated. So if you were actually doing an animation like this where you needed a variety of different color or whatever flowers, I wouldn't do it like this. I'm gonna delete layer 10 here to get rid of that one and just put a new one. I would do it like this where I would determine how many different variations of flowers that I want. 
So I'm going to go into my symbols here. So I went to library and down to flower. I'm going to right click. So for me, I'm going to make just three different kinds of flowers. So I'm going to right click and go duplicate. And I'm going to call this one flowers red, let's say, and OK. Then I'm going to right click and duplicate and call this one flowers, let's say, purple and OK. And then probably go in here and rename this one flowers orange. Okay, so now we have three different types of flowers. So I'm going to name this one right here in accordance to one of those. So I'll call that one red, and then I'd call this one purple. So now I know that at least I have three variations, and I just got to make sure I drag them onto the right layer. So if I go into purple and now double click, I'm going to get that same flower, but now I can click on the flower color, go into my properties, and change the fill to purple. I'd probably change the middle here, obviously, as well, but I'm going to click back. And you can see so far that didn't change anything there. But now I'm going to go back to my library, go into red, double click, click here, go back into properties, and change this one to red or pink. And then again, I'm going to go back. So now all I have to do is go into my library, and on the purple layer, I can drag in purple flowers and adjust them, resize them, do whatever. And then if I go to red, I can drag my red ones onto there and do the same. Oh, and if we watch this one, you're going to see that they all change back to orange in my case, because if I go back into flowers purple, for example, I didn't change the purple at the end here as well. So it changes from purple or blue, whatever that is, to orange. So make sure to go in and, you know, if you've already animated something, go in and fix that up as well. So if I go back to properties, go here. I don't know what purple I picked. Let's just say that one. So now it'll stay that color when we go back to flowers. The red ones will still change because I haven't fixed those yet, but the purple ones, whatever, will stay. So the lesson here is make sure you change your flower colors or whatever you're going to do before you actually start animating them. And remember that whatever you animate within your symbol, so I'm just messing with a few things here. So if we take a look at it, this is now what I've done just to mess with things. Everything that you mess with in here is now going to show up on every one of those purple ones in here. So if you did want something different, so let's just use these red ones as the example. I'm going to click on this one and get rid of it. You can add a new red layer. So I'm going to add a new layer and call this one red 2. But if you put a new red one on there, so if I drag a red one onto that one, it's still going to match what's happening with the other one. So just remember that if you want a red one to act, like behave different than the other red one, right click, duplicate it, We'll call this one red copy or red two, okay. So then now we can go into red two and even let's just go to the end here and actually make this one so that it stays red. So I'm gonna go into properties and change this fill to that same pinkish color or whatever. And let's say I jut out a couple things here. Now when we go back, you're gonna see that well, there's nothing there because I have to go to libraries and drag red 2 onto red 2. So I'm going to drag that one in. So red 2 is now on there. So as we watch red 2, it just went all crazy. But you can see that it's behaving different than the other red over here. So in the end, just remember that if you want things to behave the exact same, then you can have them contained within one symbol and they will all replicate and be the same. Within that symbol, you can make things a different size, rotate them or whatever. But if you want to animate them separate, so if you want this flower to rotate separate from this flower, then you have to put them on their own layer. If you want this flower's petals or whatever, we'll use this one for example, if you want this one's petals to behave in a different way than this one, and they're both red flowers, then you have to make sure that you duplicate and animate them separately.
actually kind of looks like Starro a little bit. If you want to learn more about symbols and or how to loop animations, make sure to check out one of the videos on the screen right now.